Ooh, look at that. An electric SUV, performance character, sporty coupe shape, but still suitable for the family. Does that work? We'll try to find out. Thomas and Autogefühl for you with the Skoda Enyaq Coupe RS or VRS, depending on how you want to spell it in your market actually. And look at that, the front already really strong with the unique RS shape, black frame around. Then the illuminated front grille is standard then for the RS model. And here in the lower area, you can see also special for the RS version. Yeah, a little more sinister look. But then the Mamba green color for today, our main vehicle screaming out unique color for the RS version. There's also a race blue available. That would be my Thomas blue for sure. Or what about an orange coupe, a silver one in red, white or black. Several colors available for the coupe in general, but then two specific RS colors here. The wheels would come 19 inch standard for the coupe, 20 inch standard for the RS and 21 inch here. As you can see them right now, massive, but in this aerodynamic styling. So there is the Enyaq with the SUV shape. The RS will both be available for the Enyaq coupe and the normal Enyaq SUV. The coupe has the difference that it has this falling roof line, so more design focused. Here also in the RS with black frames around. The length, however, both the same, 4 meter 65 or 183 inches. It's really about that falling roof line, if you prefer that from design or not. And then you can see here, strong shoulders. You either get a normal suspension in the RS and it's a sports suspension or optional DCC, dynamic chassis control, that's the adaptive suspension. The full matrix LED lamps are standard for the RS model, by the way. And you can see here the turning indicators or headlight lights are really spectacular, looks really stunning. And the question is, why does Skoda pay so much attention to headlamp design? Well, it's this heritage from the Czech glass craftsmanship. They somehow want to transport this one then into headlamp unit design. Here, when it's a little bit darker, you can see full glory of this illuminated grille. I think it's a really great idea. I mean, looks really amazing, doesn't it? Here, just one more clear look. Well, talking about the turning indicators here in the rear, they are cascading actually. And that whole rear, of course, looks somehow sexier here in that coupe version with a falling line. And I think it's a very clean design overall. Not too many elements like that. And also contrasting lower area here, just in black. And of course, it's an EV, so we don't need fake exhaust. And you maybe have already seen the Enyaq and the Skoda lettering here. So both here and here, both are then in black for this RS version. The acceleration figure here for the RS model, by the way, 6.5 seconds to one kilometers an hour or 62 miles an hour, 460 Newton meters of torque max. Once again, all wheel drive, one electric motor in the rear, the stronger one, and one electric motor in the front, a little bit weaker one. And that's why we also have somewhat of a rear wheel bias, but it will be, you know, quite balanced as we know so far, but we find out more about in the driving part, which will also include some, let's say, fun driving for sure. These cars that have coupe versions and the classic SUV versions, usually I would think like the SUV looks more natural and also it has more usability factor in the truck and so on. But I think this time that coupe here in the Enyaq looks way better. At least I think so. What do you think? Tell me in the comments. In the UK, by the way, this color here, the Mamba Green, is called Hyper Green. So Hyper Hyper instead of Mamba number five. <laughs> What about charging, battery and range? First of all, the overall range with the big battery, 77 kilowatt hour net. So far our experience around 400 kilometers or 250 miles. Then of course it depends summertime, wintertime, then plus minus. We'll see later in the driving part what we can score today with the VRS. Well, and then about charging, we have just this nice sample here for you. Actually, they have done an update so everything with the big battery now is at 135 kilowatt and that means then now it gets interesting for the 80 version the rear wheel drive with the big battery 29 minutes from 10 to 80 percent state of charge but the 80x all-wheel drive and the rs all-wheel drive 36 minutes 
wait a minute, why is that slower? Because they indeed get different batteries from a different supplier with a different cell chemistry. That's interesting. So you get basically a you know, higher model and have slower charging. The first peak charging, like the first couple of minutes, is actually better with the ATX and the RS and supposed to have also a peak at 170 kilowatt, but just very shortly. And then the difference is that the charging curve is falling earlier with the all-wheel drive models. Hmm, that's something, right? And you might have noticed, yes, this roof box here that you can get is also available for the coupe, so it can be installed right here. Sometimes it's the case that when you have like a special chassis form that doesn't work anymore, but here it does. And actually, it looks quite fancy with that roof box, right? Usually it looks weird, but in this case here, the combination is quite decent, isn't it? Is there a frunk or not? No, there is not. So just, you know, for wiper fluid, but at least, um, no, that's not the wiper fluid here. The wiper fluid is here, but at least then they have included this cone then in here and yeah, then or this funnel and then you can fill it in a little bit easier. Uh, yeah, like this. Car key, this high gloss black, not my favorite at all. We know it from a lot of Škoda, Seat, VW vehicles now. But what's cool, key is entry, easy. Put your hand on the outside, or on the inside to close or open and door closing sound. Mm, lovely, really like, you know, what it's about. Yeah, low frequency door closing sound, I love that. And the RS version also features microfiber here at the inside and this carbon fiber style. And above that, also like this, it's not too soft though, you know, just a little bit, but it has a nice structure so that it's good build quality wise and we know it here from the Škoda vehicles here um, yeah it's the you know somewhat let's call it the way somewhat Rolls-Royce style um, just a little smaller and a little bit more you know it's maybe the understated Rolls-Royce let's uh, let's take it that way <laughs> well and then not understated today is the RS interior with these contrast stitches wow and Indeed, you always get this color also when you pick a different exterior color. I um, think we can really argue about that. Um, if you want it more subtle, you would not go the, for the RS, but the Sport Line, and not, you know, maybe like an 80 or 80X Sport Line, and you would get the same seats, but then with gray contrast stitches. The seats themselves, by the way, I mean, you, you just keep listening and Cornelius films the seats while I'm. <laughs> putting that umbrella back to place. That's always some work. Yeah, about the seats. So uh, you can see here these sports seats with a lot of shoulder support and they look just awesome. Once again, we can argue about the contrast stitching, but the form itself, wow, here, especially that shoulder area, then the perforation with microfiber, really awesome. The only thing is that the outside slick parts here, that's not leather red, it's animal material and so unnecessary so Škoda should have made a more progressive move with that one definitely also for the steering wheel no alternative material available yet but they are working on it and they promised to change it for the future of course it will remain the same look and quality just will be then more sustainable this contrast stitching is somehow fun I think in this color a little bit over the top isn't it but here, the microfiber on the dashboard, that brings so much character and atmosphere, sporty character in that interior. Overall, I have to say, I mean, when you put pick and blue exterior also, I mean, it wouldn't fit like exactly matching with this color on the interior. But I mean, blue with yellow works, yeah, like when you think about like this contrasting colors or something. Um, but overall, yes, maybe gray would have been cooler like in the sport line, but I think still. I love the interior. As far as I checked the configurator so far in the UK market, you do not get the microfiber, but just all the way animal skin. Really? In 2022? For an electric vehicle? Skoda guys, I'm watching you. But I have to say, the seat ergonomics from the seat form is just awesome. So much shoulder support here, really sporty. At the same time, it keeps actually the weight of the lumbar area. So long motorway runs, as long as the range is of course sufficient. No problem, a lot of electric 
controls here, also for the lumbar support and so on. So even as a tall person here, one meters 86 or 601 with all the controls and so on is no problem. Headroom, also plenty of space left. You can see here the fixed panoramic roof. Yeah, and I mean, no matter if sporty driving or long-term driving, you can enjoy the roof, but also that seating position here is really great. I'm feeling super comfortable and cozy. And also with this, you know, racy accentuations, steering wheel in, out, up, down. So a good seating position here for different heights. Cockpit overview of the siblings here, VW ID4, Audi Q4 e-tron and Dash Scotia Enyaq. I think this one has the most beautiful interior. Look at that here, like this swinging line. And here in the RS also with the microfiber, that's beautifully done. Very, very base version of the Enyaq. Get a 10 inch screen, a smaller one, but all coupes already. Also, of course, the RS gets the 13 inch screen. There is capacitive volume control here. Hmm. And also not bad backlit, but at least you also have it here on the steering wheel and you can always use this actually. If we move a little bit further down, then we still have some hard hotkeys. They sound a little bit cheap from that clicking sound, but at least, for example, you have a drive mode selector, you can pick the driving modes and so on. Further down below, we have cup holders. They are not really adaptive, but they have this, you know, like, um, you know, like special holes so that these bottles can fit in there and then you can basically open them with one hand. So um, that's maybe a thing, I don't know. One inductive charging pad or also cable connection for Android Auto or uh, Apple CarPlay, but it also works wirelessly. And then a very tiny, oh, ain't that cute, gear selector here. And there's no P mode, you just hit the parking brake, the electric one, then it's basically the P mode. Cubby hole and then here, well attached this one and then it kind of goes in a puzzling way yeah it's great camera work here as well today <laughs> so here one and then two but also three four uh yeah and then you can also tetris this <laughs> all the way back to tetris is that a new verb tetris this steering wheel here with nice contrast stitching VRS logo in the UK once again. It's VRS in Germany, for example. It's just RS. Who knows why? It's supposed to be some copyright thing with, was it with Ford or so? Yeah, strange thing. Then here on the left side, there's for the volume jog and also muting, heated steering wheel and real button still like to have that. That's cool. Here, these shifting pedals, they are for recuperation modes, like three levels of recuperation. You always have to set them um, after driving because they do the homologation for the range and the cycle and so on with the automatic recuperation mode. Then it adapts, for example, um, you know, when there's someone in front of you with recuperation and freeway, it rolls. Usually this car is more about rolling and you use the brakes for the regener regenerative braking. But you, again, you can also use them the shifting pedals. On the right side, you can activate the travel assist, assistance systems, and here you can switch the view a little bit in the small digital instruments. And usually with Skoda, you know, with others like Octavia, um, Superb, here you can control more and more in the digital instruments. But here it's kind of like, you know, I have found no real function for that. Um, it's kind of like dead. It would have been cool if you can scroll through some menus like in the radio or in the infotainment system or something, but no. That doesn't happen. Digital instruments, easy, clear to read, and you cannot adjust so much. Um, that's basically it. Uh, they rather focus than on the head up display. Recuperation modes here. The normal driving mode is recuperation level auto. The car decides itself. There's like a stronger recuperation when there's a car in front of you, for example. Then the B mode is always strong recuperation. You have to set it with the shifting lever, or then you can use the shifting pedals. One, two, three there's stronger recuperation or go the right shifting pedal up again um, but the thing is you know let's say i put it to level three like almost one pedal driving then i park the car and then i put in d mode again well then it's being resetted and the reason is manufacturers need to offer the homologation with one specific driving mode and then they basically have to decide which is the startup driving mode hey in the head-up display with augmented reality function, we show you already while driving, you see here this big arrow. That is actually quite helpful then, then I really know where to turn actually. And of course, with the 
usual functions also for speed and allowed speed and so on and so on. Infotainment system has been an issue majorly with Audi, VW and Skoda here in the electric vehicles. But here they've put an update now and you can see already here it's faster now. It looks actually quite cool and has also this you know, rather big overview. Let's take a look at the map right here once again. Yeah, there are better ones, but there are also worse ones. And it is indeed more responsive than before. We're in the Italian Tuscany region for you today. Of course, a very beautiful region, region, no doubt. Seat heating is here on the screen and also the temperature stays in the screen. So for a capacitive solution, it's somewhat okay. Still, I would prefer the manual dials here always. So either I have this screen or you can also pick this home menu here. Not sure which I think rather this one has a um, you know better overview. Then you can also have me set here the stationary air conditioning, for example. Um, also time it that you get up in the morning and the vehicle is warm. That's actually quite fancy. And Apple CarPlay and your auto integration like this. And it also features here the Canton sound system, and this has a very nice sound indeed. Good resonance room here. Earlier we had a uh, like bug where the um, subwoofer was failing. Not sure if it's together that some of the vehicles are here. Prototype vehicle might be an issue, but I always want to mention that to be honest. The rear view camera resolution is not the best, let's say it that way, but here I wanted to show you this cool rear view camera image with a sunset from the Italian Tuscany, just beautiful here, directly at the vineyard. Isn't that lovely? What about the rear guys here? So then this sunshade. <laughs> so the shade, manual shade is here. It's easy, good solution. Definitely, especially for the kids in the rear. Also microfiber and then you also have decent this configuration. Then when it's available in your market, the microfiber also in the rear and with this perforation. This really good job, I think. And that fixed panoramic roof, by the way, it leaves a lot of headroom. It also is kind of like shaded that it doesn't get too hot. Of course, it will get hotter than if it wouldn't be there. But it's standard for all coupe models. So it's not a specific RS thing. It's really standard for all coupes. And then um, here the leg room. So it works with four or five tall adults easily. Also in the rear when I have to see to my driving position and also in the rear. Um, I'm under the panoramic roof and so there's also headroom left and you know the SUV would have this more continuous line that it's better for the headroom but since they went here for the fixed panoramic roof then it gives you some headroom again so that you don't have a big compromise in here with this vehicle and that's actually then quite okay. You have isofix on the outside parts you do already fold the seat from here but you cannot adjust it in any way in you know angle or something so that's fixed as it is. <laughs> I released it before and I obviously didn't put it in. <laughs> yeah, that's the... You okay? Maybe the car wants to talk to us. They do that nowadays, you know. So um, then here, cup holders, they are a little bit weird because they're also not adaptive. And then we have the ski hatch here as well. And well, about that middle console, this is with this extra cubby hole, two USB-C chargers, but you can also remove this whole thing. Um, then, you know, have it a little bit like, you know, more like this flat floor, which is to me a little bit cooler, isn't it? Any compromises with a trunk or boot area? Let's take a look. Here, the backpack stands upright like it is, even here in this, you know, more far back area. This is what you lose then with the um, with the coupe shape here, but you still see it's very usable. A meter of 40 inches in width and about 92 centimeters or 36 inches in normal length. And even here, the height you can see is, you know, around 40 centimeters or 16, 17 inches, so totally fine. What about the charging cable? There are two solutions, either here in the um, lower area, there you can store one, goes quite deep in there actually or then here there's also the separate bag so they also thought about clean solution ash for that and then you can fold the seats right here there's a lot of um, yeah nets equipment here as well um, so 
yeah, nets all over the place in this configuration. And when I put the measuring stick all the way through to the seat as I would be driving, yeah, I know you guys love that I'm gonna do that here. So they are almost one meters 80 or 70 inches. Welcome to Thomas's Driving Lounge. Got a Enyaq Coupe RS or VRS, and we picked the sport mode and do an acceleration zero to one kilometers an hour here on that open road. And let's see how that goes. 6.5 seconds is the official figure. Can we reach that? Let's see. Preload. Nope, that's it. Nice. Yeah, pretty quick. Dual motor. Check in the time code below if you really reach that 6.5 seconds. That was a lot of fun actually. And at the same time, actually pretty smooth as well because front and the rear power right there. And here the road is actually quite bumpy, but the comfort is still given in a way because the DCC, the Adaptive suspension is doing a great job actually. Here in the sports mode, it's of course a little bit rougher. I feel like, you know, doing some rally racing here right now. And if you want to have it a little bit more comfortable, you can always go um, back here to the normal mode. And then the suspension is a little bit more forgiving. It always rules in a certain spectrum. Oh no, it's a little bit slower, these small birds. So and inside this, you know, like this smaller spec, like you just move like the, the span where the suspension is being adaptive, so to speak. And that's of course good. The only thing you cannot deny here are the 21 inch wheels. And that's the thing, you do lose comfort. So I would definitely stick with smaller ones here with the RS, the 20 inch are standard. So um, yeah, definitely leave it with that. And if you have the non RS coupe, 19 inch as standard then leave it also with 19 inch because the small it is yeah it may, might not look that sporty but 19 already looks sporty and you just have more comfort steering is really nice and precise in the normal mode it's a little bit lighter in the sports mode then you have a little bit more feedback that's actually quite good so i like to have a little bit more feedback from uh, you know from from the, from the steering here yeah, and suspension is really nice. The whole chassis also, like how everything works together. Chassis, steering, suspension is a really, really good drive. Yeah, over this small bridge here. Beautiful, really. So much fun to drive it indeed. And also really nice roads here in uh, Tuscany. Not nice in, um, you know, as for the road surface, but I mean, that's also good for testing that we can see how it behaves here in these rather rough conditions actually so although it is not a small suv you still have the feeling it is agile because low center of gravity battery pack is in the lower lower button the lower bottom of the car there and then once again with the agile steering and here also you know uphill out of the corners power is always there so this vrs version gives you a little bit more punch a little bit more boost would I say that you definitely need this VRS version if you compare it to the AT or ATX version? The ATX version would of course be the more comparable one already with the all-wheel drive. Well, you do notice that you have more punch, of course, yes, but it's not that you would say it's a completely different car. And we, um, we do feel with a lot of the electric performance vehicles that the differences are not that large if you compare them to the, you know, when you have compared combustion engines, like the sports versions of the combustion engines, because more or less here, then it's only electronic tune. You would go for the VRS version if you, like me, appreciate, for example, a lot of Alcantara use here on the dashboard and also the seats. The seats are keeping us tied very well at the same time. They're super comfortable. So uh, team Cornelius and Thomas here today, and we both feel actually really comfortable in the seats. We are both very tall. Cornelius even taller than me. That means something. <laughs> so, and here, especially in the, in the shoulder area, you know, it is so good because it basically keeps off some pressure of the, of the lower lumbar area. And because the weight is being held here in the shoulder area. So this is really awesome. We are really enjoying the drive. This car can do both comfortable and also long motor rides with these comfortable sport seats. It's also really silent in here. The noise insulation is really very, very good. We hardly hear anything from the outside. 
it's almost like an ins totally insulated cabin. And then also you have the silence from the electric drive. Yeah, you also heard that what we do not have is kind of this, this sound uh, emulation or so. So that's not present here. Um, they didn't go for this philosophy, rather, uh, you know, just silence even in the sporty uh, mode, kind of like stealth a little bit. But to me, that's fine, you know, also for the vehicle overall, I'm not sure if you really need that, but you can surely, um, you know, argue pro and con. It's a really beautiful area here, right? Not maybe maybe with the, um, uh, you know, with the construction here, but overall, beautiful roads here. I look at that alley with the pine trees, beautiful indeed. And really good to test this, you know, not so small vehicle also on a um, little bit smaller roads, because once again, it doesn't feel as big as it is due to the very good driving characteristics. Uh, am I missing um, anything? Well, I have a head-up display in my line of sight. Also, you have this augmented reality function that I have like projected arrows, even if I haven't the GPS on that screen here at this moment. Um, it's actually okay that it sticks here with the DCC because then I can switch back and forth. The only thing is, yeah, you might argue, ah, do I, do I want to go back to the GPS? And then you always have to go like, you know, for example, here menu, and then back to the GPS. That's more or less okay, but I think it would be better if I would have a direct hotkey somewhere, at least for DCC selection, I can then once again press the lower button there. And let's go to normal mode again, see the difference from the, yeah, do you immediately feel that the DCC is then um, softer and more forgiving, especially when you have some um, some smaller bumps um, in the road right there. So most of the time, probably I would drive with that. But you can also individualize that. For example, here in the individual mode, then you can, for example, set my preferable a little bit more resistance from that steering wheel. At the same time, maybe go for the softer suspension when you have these bumpy roads or so. So indeed, it is a family EV SUV, but you can also get it for driving fun. And it's the same concept that we really know very well from the Škoda Octavia uh, VRS or the... What's there? No, oh, there isn't a superb VRS, right? Yeah, mainly the... Okay, leave it. Uh, the Kodiak. There's a Kodiak VRS. Yeah, that is um, the comparable ICE version to this one here. Let's go to the sports mode once more. We have like a slight left turn here. All free, Cornelius? Yeah, okay, free. great. I'm trusting it. <laughs> <laughs> and 100 again, that's it. Sorry about that. <laughs> he was like, <laughs> Yeah, that, that was, so I, I didn't need like a G-force indicator in the instruments or something. So Cornelius was the G-force indicator, so that, that worked very well. But he also, when we accelerated out of the corner, very smooth, there's no, you know, that yeah. that the steering would lead me somewhere where I don't want to have it. Um, so very good distribution also between the axles front and right. So that proves again, they found a really, really nice setup here. As for assistance systems, uh, the blind spot monitor, I mean, gladly there's no one around here today. That's why we can drive very, very well. But the blind spot monitor would appear here in the side mirrors. And then we can also set the travel assist, if you have that option here at the steering wheel. But then to control the cruise control is here at that lower um, column here next to the steering wheel. And then we can set the cruise control and also the speed with this lower um, column. And here the active lane keeping assist. I mean, this is hardly to see here, even for our own eyes, this wide line in the middle part. But here the car is keeping it straight very well. You're supposed to keep your hands on the steering wheel still, nevertheless. And also when we tested some motorway driving earlier and also some, uh, you know, winding corners, that was all very, very well done. So, uh, yeah, really impressed. So everything here, yeah, that's actually nice. Also augmented reality display for the lane keeping assist. So it's displaying me basically lines on the lines. Yeah, that might be something for, you know, night time that you can see that then maybe a little bit better or something. Yeah, that could be something. So in the sporty aspects, great. Comfortable aspects, also great. We had enough performance. You can maybe argue with electric vehicles, you can always get more performance. But is it really necessary to be even faster? 
maybe not so. The top speed, by the way, is 180 kilometers an hour or 112 miles per hour, also sufficient. And then we also have, um, no, that's, that's the menu. Then we also have, um, you know, the um, economy data. And um, here now we are on 18.5 kilowatt hours on one kilometers. It's perfect temperatures for EVs out there at the moment, 15.5 degrees Celsius. So when it would be a little bit cold or you drive more in a performance way, then you go maybe like 20 kilowatt hours in one kilometers. Um, if it's really cold, maybe a little bit worse. But that's approximately 32 kilowatt hours on 100 miles. And what does it mean for the range then if we calculate that with this 77 kilowatt hours battery net? A lot of numbers, sorry about that. But sorry, it's necessary, it's really necessary. <laughs> so the approximate figure definitely these 400 kilometers or 250 miles is realistic for this big battery pack. 70% of all customers so far went for the biggest battery pack. This is also a trend we see throughout the EV um, industry because the batteries do not offer so great range yet. Most people then went for the bigger batteries. It will be less than 400 kilometers or 250 miles in winter times, like when it's really cold where you live and when you drive really efficient cruise control, low speed, in summertime, you could also exceed this range figure. But overall, I think it's also fine, you know? And here, once again, in these bends, really nice from its steering, yeah. And I love this steering and seating combination, just awesome. So the effects here also for the driving figures is actually also fine. The question is really, are there any box unchecked here? And well, at least from the driving part, we hardly found any. Maybe here that I would have like the separate climate control and don't need to be touching the screen. Similar in the new BMWs, by the way, with the uh, operating system 8. At least it always stays in this direction and is therefore also in the screen, also backlit. And you see it, you know, not like at night in the um, ID, ID4, for example, where you have to go here in the um, touch area. And here, this, of course, I wouldn't use that for the volume. I would also use it here on the steering wheel for changing the volume. Yeah, but so maybe a little bit things from the user interface to, you know, to tweak or something. Software has also been updated here, so it's easier to control it while driving. So overall, very impressed. That was a great result also from the driving part. Of course, big competitors, like a little bit smaller, the Kia EV6, but definitely worth watching that one. Or of course, one of the standard vehicles in the segment, the Tesla Model Y, tune in there.